Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. When we wean a colt off of a mare, we don't give it free choice water. It isn't dumped out in a pasture and try to catch it in two years. We keep our colts home and we lead them to water twice a day in the summer, sometimes three times a day in the heat. So with us leading them to water two or three times a day, they get used to being caught. They get used to what wool is. They get used to backing out of a stall. It doesn't always go perfect, especially when you're dealing with a stud colt in the spring of his second year. You know, a two-year-old stud colt's fairly dumb. Back up, Billings. Back up, Billings. Back up. Back up. Back up. Ooh. Okay. Use the same terms you want to use in driving. If you're going to use OK team, like I do, or OK, or use the same terms, you know? Consistency, consistency, consistency. It makes your life so much easier. And whatever you're comfortable using in a bad situation in the woods or in the field, you're going to scream that. That's what's going to be natural to you. That's why you always use wool for wool and you don't change it, you don't deviate it, you don't do anything. Because when that time comes that you need them to wool, you're going to scream wool. And they got to know it. It's got to be consistent. That, that could mean your life someday. And my opinion is the Brabants are a little easier too. You can just, the simplest things can be practiced. Back, 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 back. Okay, team. Ooh. Back, 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 back. Ooh. Now, that wasn't a lot of pressure on the lead line. Why would you want something that pulls your arm sockets out all day? If you're going to drive five or six of them and they're all hard mouth, they'll literally pull your arms off. Okay, team. So I'll show you what I'll do next to start a colt that I know I want to put a harness on. And I'm, and I'm not making this up. My wife can attest to this. This colt's never had a collar on his head. He's never had a harness on. He got a bath last night. It doesn't look like it, but we're shedding and we're dealing with mud right now in the spring. We've lost about two feet of snow in the last week and a half. So it's mud everywhere. But the next step I'll do, you have to have very sophisticated machinery. You take the same lead line you just started with. And you're going to see if he has any uh-oh spots. And if he has an uh-oh spot, then we better deal with it before it's uh, an expensive harness. So take the lead line. I'm not trying to scare him. So I'm looking for uh-oh spots. Anywhere. See, he quit chewing. you got to be sensitive. you got to watch your colt. He quit chewing for a second. That was a little bit of an uh-oh. Now he's eating again. If he's eating, well, robins are like me. If they're eating, they're happy. So, all right. Let me see if I can get this rope because I might want to reach under and get a belly band on a harness. So now I got this. Well, that don't seem to be an uh-oh. Now I'll run it through here like a pole strap. Well, I'm not finding an uh-oh yet. Okay. Take the rope back here. Oh, nope, he flinched. You see his muscles tighten up for a second? He could kick me, I suppose, or something. I doubt it, but it could happen. Now, what if I use a crouper strap? Well, we'll wait for that for a minute. We'll try a crouper strap in a minute. Okay, so we've got quarter straps figured out. He's still looking at me, but he's still chewing, still eating. Let's try a leg. Okay, do we have any uh-ohs here? Because I guarantee you, if you use this horse long enough, you're going to get him tangled in something. If you're really using horses on a farm or in the woods, you're going to get him tangled in something. So we better make sure he doesn't freak out the minute he gets something. He kicks a leg out of a tug and gets a leg on the wrong side of a tug. Your farrier might appreciate this too. Let's see how much... You could pick it up. You could pick it up. Set him up for success. He got his weight over there. He set up for it. There. Now don't ask for a very long. Usually in about three days, I hate to even put a time frame on it, but usually in about three days, we're doing useful work with a colt. What I mean by useful work, they ain't broke. They aren't, they don't know a lot, but if you got a good breaking mare to use them with, Usually within three days, we're hauling manure or doing something useful. Once you're doing something useful, 
it don't feel like breaking or starting to cold, it don't feel like a waste of your time anymore because you're getting something done. So we're going to show this collar to them, even how you present everything. You know, you can get a lot more pass anything if you present it right. I'm not forcing it on them. I'm going to wait for him to come to me. It might take a while. Might not. I'm pretty interesting here. Never wore a collar, never wore a harness. Look at that. Is that scary? That smell like one of your herd mates? That's because you're getting hand-me-downs at first till we see what fits you. That's all right. What do you think of that? It doesn't move unless I move it. You're okay. Not very scary. Slobber it up good. Yeah, give it a bite. You did it. I didn't do it. Okay, Mr. Ed. Okay, so we're going to take this chain off. You're fine. You're fine. Oh, you'll be fine. All your brothers and sisters live through this. You're going to live through it too. I'll guarantee it. You'll be okay. As long as you got me, you got everything you need. Let's give it a smell. Okay, so I'll spread this collar as wide as I can. I don't even know if it's going to fit him. No, nope, you're fine. You come to me. I'm not forcing you. I'll tell you what we'll do, buddy. We're going to make this thing a little bigger. Yeah, snort. Nobody forced you, though. I'll take this pad out. Make it a little bigger. Let's try this again. There's nothing macho about starting horses. In my opinion, there's nothing macho about breaking horses. But there's definitely nothing macho about starting horses. It's like, I don't know, tricking your six-year-old into eating vegetables. You just got to try to be a little smarter than them. No, you're okay. Shove your head in there. You're okay. No, you're fine. I see the white of your eye. You're okay. You're okay. No, no. Is that pushing you too much? Shh. You're okay. We'll be fine. We'll make it together. You're in. Have a bite of food. You're okay. Oh, yes, definitely. That was horrible. That's probably the hardest thing you'll ever have to go through in your life. Until that first 1800 pound mare kicks you in the chest. That might hurt a little bit. This will be the first time this colt's seen a harness, just like that was the first time that colt's seen a collar. We don't have big mysteries here. We just try not to push him to the breaking point. We go up to it, then we back off. Here we go, talking to him about it, showing it to him, trying not to scare him. It's okay. You're okay. Shush. You got Jason. You're okay. You're okay. You got Jason. Remember, if you got me, you're okay. There you go. You got your first pair of britches. Come on, back up a little bit so I can work on you. Back up. You're okay. First, whoa, you're okay. No, you're still okay. You're okay. You want to be useful, don't you? You don't want to be made fun of by all the mirrors. Back up. You're okay. Back up. See, he's not chewing his hay or nothing right now, so I pushed him to his limit here on stress. Yeah, you can have that hay. Now you can relax. We're going to pull these hames down. Nothing has to be perfect the first time. You're not going to go out and plow eight hours with this colt. So I'm not looking for a perfect fit or anything. I'm looking to get these hames strapped on, get a few more things strapped up so it stays on them. And uh, then he can wear it for a little while. And we'll come back in a little while after he's worn a little while and see where we go from there. We'll give him time to feel it. Move around a little bit with it. You're okay. Give me some room to work. That is a rule though. I don't like my fingers smashed. There you go. See? You've had a harness all of five minutes. It's already better. You're okay. You know my voice. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Back up. Give me some room. There you go. Good boy. There we go. First time in a harness. Billings here is not related to any of my females out of, out of my dead stud big. Um, he came from Michigan, from Brian and Christina Dickinson. They're one of the largest breeders in our Robbins Association Club. And Billings is no relation, so he's our next herd sire. Theoretically, but we gotta see, you know, 
He will be probably, but I always like to work them first and see what kind of brains they have. But uh, I want to keep breeding good using horses. You're okay. There. Him stepping over, letting me in like he knows how to do. That's him relaxing a little bit and accepting it. I'm reaching under like we already did with the lead line. You're okay. Now we'll probably leave this colt alone for 30 minutes to an hour just to wear this harness. Then we'll come back, see where it goes from there. I'm not gonna say what we'll do next because I gotta let him tell me what we're gonna do next if we can go to the next step. Don't even know if this is gonna fit you, buddy, but we're going right to blinds. Try to take some of the stimulus away from you. Jesus loves me. This I know. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible told me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible be so. I'm not looking to ruin his mouth, even though I have a lever bit or whatever you call these bits. I just snapped it in the snaffle part. I'm not looking for extra torque. I'm not looking to ruin his mouth or get in a fight. I'd love it if he ended up soft mouth because if you're going to drive him thousands of hours, why would you want to pull harder? Back. You're okay with them blinders. Back. Try to keep it as slow as you can. He's a very excitable colt, so why would we add gas to the fire? You're okay. You're okay. You got it. Adding a stud colt into the mixture versus just a colt colt adds another dimension because our breaking horse ain't a gelding, it's a mare. And he thinks he's, you know, God's gift to women in the spring of his second year. So we just got to watch it. Convince him that we're, it's work time and not anything else time. Now I'm snapping him too, Betty, so we're committed. You understand? Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to do the britchings and the tugs. And we'll be off. Okay, Billy. You're okay, bud. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay, little man. You got me. You're okay. You got me. You got me. Don't, don't expect perfection and, and you know, just keep thinking they're kindergartners and first graders and they don't always hold still and they don't always do it perfect and you'll be a lot more satisfied with your colts. And, and perfection maybe never, never will come but real good will come if you don't screw it up in the beginning. You know, you'll get them real good if you keep them calm. Make them not hate this, make them like it. So yeah. It takes a long time to make a good horse, you know. That's why when somebody says they want $3,500 or $4,000 for a broke team, well, that colt had to be bred. It had to be born. You took risks with your mare at having a colt. You had to feed that colt for two years. You had to start it right. Then you had to find one that looked like it and drove with it. You know, a good broke team, you can't pay too much for a good broke team. Haw. Huh? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with my colt. I'm happy with my colt. You know, and if he turns out that he can work good and has brains, well then you're proud to breed something like that to your mares. If you've got good mares, you don't want to breed an idiot to them. Then you're doing the breed no justice and you're going backwards in your breeding program. <coughs> well, with breaking your stud horse and working your stud horse, we talked about that some, 
Then you find out what you really got, because he's going to be half the equation for your whole next generation of colts. He has a bigger impact on your farm than any one mare, so Aww. you want to make sure he is good and top notch. Aww. Aww. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, me. Okay, team. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. And I don't know. Ha. 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 Easy, buddy. Any way we can do this easier and softer is, is good with me. So this afternoon you'll probably just repeat what you did this morning. Probably just repeat just what I did this morning. Just go out and come back again. Go around, go out and work on our woes and our lefts and our rights. I did one back this morning and he pushed it back about a foot and I let right off. I just wanted an effort. He gave a try so I rewarded him by letting off the lines. I didn't ask him to back it in the shed. He stepped back, he felt that pole tighten up, that pole strap, and the bridging's tighten up a little bit. He backed it up a step, good. This afternoon I might go for two steps. If he gives me two steps, I'll let off. In a year, he'll back a spreader into, the, into a barn, you know. Um, if you want perfection, go to your Honda or Kawasaki dealer and buy a four-wheeler. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. This is a thinking man's game, and it's a progressive, thing, you know, you got to take baby steps. You got to help them get there. You don't take your six-year-old and dump them off in eighth grade and say, man, why don't you get this? You got lots of days goes into turning out. Same thing with them. Lots of days goes into turning out a good broke four-year-old. Come back out, buddy. It's not in there for life. There you go. Little boy now. You're okay. We'll hang it here. You're okay with the old hag deer. Yes, Betty will pounce you. Don't pick a fight with her. You can have some water now. Good boy. Old Betty. You can't die on me, Methuselah. Uh, mm -hmm. You're almost out of dummies now, Betty, for the year. Living in the world, in the world, in the world. Living in the world. See what it is. It's not scary. No, it's not scary. Shush, shush, no, you're fine. You're fine. It's not scary. You're so big and strong. How could it hurt you? You're so big and strong. It's not scary. It couldn't hurt you. You're okay, little man. Betty, come hither. Come, come hither. I'm gonna tie my lines and do his tugs. You stay up there for another minute, Rue. I think I'm happy. You happy? Oh yes. Yeah. Katrina and I've been through some wrecks, <laughs> so. Some exciting times. <laughs> some exciting times with colorful language mixed in. So yeah, this was this was a good one. This is another good one. Yeah. Watching what you did out there, it's easy to forget that you do have two people out there because you didn't really need it. Um, oh. Once you got going. Yeah. But um, can you talk a little bit about how important that is? Oh, the time between me not needing it and the time you needing it is about one split second. And Katrina and I have done enough of them together now. She knows one hop, Jason's fine. Two hops, Jason might be fine. 
And by the third hop, and we should just know from the body language of the Colt and from Jason, time to come in and try to get a lead line on him. And if a line comes unclipped or some little thing. Yep. Just some little thing that that second person could, could prevent a com complete catastrophe. You know, um, okay, I'm getting excited and I hook my bit into the snap on my neck yoke. We've had that a couple times. Oh my lord, now you find out if they have full reverse because they hooked their bit. Well, Katrina comes up there, oh, easy, 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 easy. Unsnaps it, everything's fine. Averted a complete catastrophe. I don't know how people do it alone. Right. I've never had to. So right. when I was young, it was me and my father. And as I got older, it was me and my wife. And very soon you'll see it'll be me and my boys. And Katrina will be able to watch from the edge of the field. I'm getting on. Just watch yourself. Strange noises and squeaks. Oop. Okay, team. You're okay, little man. New noises. Inside of me. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Harnessed every morning. If all he can do is four loads of manure before lunch and two after lunch, then that's all he can do. Slowly he'll build muscle and strength. Slowly the repetition will build confidence. And with confidence, I can feel confident and security. And then we can load the spreader more. And then we can load the spreader more, yeah. If, he's, if it's getting to be August and he's another 100 pounds heavier and confident, there might be that day that you just like, it dawns on you, you know what, he can handle it. You put them last two scoops on with this kid's tear. And then you find out what kind of man you have or not. But uh, yeah, there's there's no we don't have any secrets. We get them we get them started. Three days ago, you you wouldn't have made any kind of prejudgments. Right now, uh, do you think it's pretty pretty good chance that he'll be able to um, he'll uh, stay intact? He'll be our next herd sire. Uh -huh. Yeah, anything that can learn that fast has brains. And you can see, I mean, you can see from the video day one that I wasn't faking anything. That horse had never been collared, never been harnessed. And this is the morning of the third day, and we were in the afternoon two days ago. So, I mean, you're, you're literally talking 48 or 60 hours, he spread his first load of poop. Stronger is the one living inside of me than ever could be living in this world. In this world. In this world. I think the biggest mistake people make when breaking colts, that's the old term, breaking colts, starting colts, is uh, they've seen a three-day seminar or something and they think, well, I should be able to do this in three days. Well, there's some colts that are like born broke and there's some colts that everything might take twice as long. So I don't think you can think linearly. You know, that's for machinery. You have to think that you're dealing with a living being. And this colt here, I can tell you right now, is a little more excitable than some of my Brabants. Um, He'll probably make an excellent horse because he'll, he'll be a go-getter as far as the work is. But uh, it might take him four or five days, but it takes another colt two days. And that's where people get in trouble as they get impatient. Well, why isn't this happening faster? You can't get impatient. Why do kids, some kids read in first grade and some kids read in third grade, you know? The reason we're having more success now is leading them to water twice a day for months on end and teaching them them ground manners. So now when I say, whoa, it's like, oh yeah, that stopped. 
they just they have that drilled in 2,000 times before we ever go out there in a harness. So that, so I guess that's something that you didn't catch on camera is the last year and a half leading him to water, mm -hmm. teaching him to matter, stay off my feet, back up, back out of a stall, whoa. Okay team, I say that just to get him to move. Well why not use the same term and then two years later when you gotta break him, it all works. Mm -hmm. So, really happy, really happy with our province. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.